Hi, I'm Tom, and I'm a Gen X grown up, and I support Gen X grown up on Patreon. And you should too. Go to patreon.com slash Gen X grown up. No life, no fun. Don't you know that you're a grown up? Gen X grown up is a YouTube channel, website, and audio podcast you're listening to right now. All made for and by people who love exploring media, games, tech, and toys of yesterday and today through the eyes of Gen Xers who refuse to grow up. Your dinner cannot just be french fries. Basically, life sucks as a grown up. Welcome back, Gen X Grown Up Podcast listeners, to this episode 100 Holy of the Gen X cow. Grown Up Podcast. I am John. Joining us as always is Mo. 100? 100. That's right, Holy Mo. crap. Hi, everybody. Yep. 100. Holy cow. <laughs> and of course, George is here. Hey, how's it going, guys? <laughs> In this episode, we take a look at the new Disney Plus series centering around the God of Mischief. Test drive a new handheld retro games emulation platform and play a mobile app brimming with nostalgic pixelated football gaming goodness. We're going to get into those topics and many more. In fact, a couple of them I really want to Including know about now. the alliteration topic, apparently. There's a lot of alliteration, <laughs> right? I worked hard on that one. <laughs> pixelated football <laughs> gaming you. goodness. How many more adjectives are you going to throw in that damn sentence? <laughs> Jesus. My idea was I'd work a little extra hard because it's episode 100. I'm trying to, you know, uh, I'm not, I, don't to, I don't want to phone this one in like we did the last 99, right? I'm working at this <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what was going wrong. Yeah, that's what it was. Before we get into those topics, uh, as we always do here at the top of the show, it's time for some fourth listener email. If this is your first time joining us in episode 100, where, where you been? <laughs> we, <laughs> what the <laughs> hell? Why are you listening to this one? <laughs> there is the three of us, and then we uh, assume that if anybody else listens, that's the fourth listener after the three of us. So the fourth listener of this episode is JJ. Uh, and the subject mm. line of his email is, thanks. And a suggestion. Uh, the suggestion part, I've I've already filed in our filing system. <laughs> That's like the most CEO speak. Thanks for doing your job, but you're fired. Yes. <laughs> no, it we was really like appreciate that. your no, hard no. work, but. <laughs> I have this pink slip for you. No, that's not what JJ says. So, so I'm reading the thanks part. Uh, JJ, we heard your suggestion and we filed it in our list of possible future episodes. So thanks for that. But here is what JJ had to say. Every Friday morning while on my way to my delivery route, you guys are on. Note, I drive a tractor trailer to do local deliveries and pickups in Dallas, Texas. Oh. Mm -hmm. Your podcast is downloaded to my phone and you three help make Friday a TGIF Friday. In a word, awesome. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's yeah. not us. He's got to be writing to another podcast. I don't think so because <laughs> check this out. He specifically addresses each of us by name. He has something different to say to each of us. Okay. So, so starting with, he says, John, thank you for the professionalism that is not stuffy and the friendly atmosphere that you all bring so that we Gen Xers feel like like we are back in high school, class of 87 for me, with friends having a good time. Well, thank you, JJ. <laughs> hey, hey, now, you mean, oh, come on, George. <laughs> <laughs> and they know it's you because it was on the right speaker, that kiss in the voice. Okay, okay, here we go. Mo, mm -hmm. whenever you speak of growing up in the city, an excited yes can be heard in my tractor. As a kid growing up in Chicago, your experiences remind me of a 70s childhood in the Windy City. All right, nice. cool. And then he moves on to George. Oh. <laughs> and George, what the hell? Thank you for being there. <laughs> and George, right, first you too. Of all, I'm last again. <laughs> it's like wonderful. Right. It's George and a suggestion. <laughs> no, the no, suggestion no. is cut George the hell off the list. <laughs> <laughs> no, it isn't. JJ says, George, yes, you can be the curmudgeon, but you, you have a heart, oh. <laughs> you care, and your loyal friendship is obvious. There you go. That's, That's a bunch of bullshit, but okay. <laughs> I don't have a heart and I ain't loyal to nothing but money. He can't even take a compliment. I what know. the, what the hell's actually, going on? I'm only loyal to money and I ain't got no heart. Dollar, okay. dollar, dollar. Well, here's a dollar. Be nice to me this episode. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I can be rented. <laughs> can't be JJ wraps it up by saying, thank you fellows for putting a smile on the face of a truck driver who often has other expressions while fighting <laughs> Dallas traffic. <laughs> That's all, thank you, man. That's cool. That is cool. I don't recognize that name. Is JJ a new fourth listener for us? Well, he's new to us, right? I don't think he's ever written in before. Nice. That's cool. right. Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. Thank you so much, JJ. I, I like hearing these stories from people that write in, not just, hey, we love this show, we love this show, which I appreciate hearing, but how you listen, how you experience it, mm -hmm. and kind of that's neat to hear. So if you're in your truck now listening to this episode, just give a little toot toot of the air horn for me, if you would. And <laughs> <laughs> if you would like your email featured here on the show, it is so easy. Just hit us up at podcast 
podcast at genxgrownup.com. We read every single one, and most of them, like JJ's, will make the show. All right, it's time to jump into episode 100 Oof. right after this break. Stick around. From 20th Century Studios and New Regency, the creator, only in theater September 29th. Like it or not, humankind will end. We should never have let AI out of the box. From the director of Rogue One. Did you locate the weapon? This can't be right. She's just a kid. My name is Alfie. You're my friend? She dies with the rest of them. I can't do that. The creator experienced the movie event only in theater September 29th. Rated PG-13. May be inappropriate for children under 13. Get tickets now. Hour hand, minute hand, second hand, sweet hand. Time is of the essence, gotta pick it up a beat. Cause time is money and money is time. The one that does it faster is the one that we buy. High gear, full tilt, gotta get it done. Quick, 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 bite fast food, eat it on the run. Rush job, turn around, speed is now the key. Tell them that you want it ASAP. Get it in an instant, punch and run. Out by five, four, three, two, one. We live in an instant world, why not make an instant fortune? Play fortune, instant lottery, you could win a quick million. Be sure to subscribe to or follow Gen X Grown Up wherever you listen. And while you're there, rate and review the show, too. It helps more than you know. Let's get this episode 100 underway by looking at media, as we always do here at the top of the show. Of course, it could be comics or music or film or television or whatever it is that you're checking out. And George, I'm going to get started with you. What have you been enjoying new since we last spoke? Yeah, you know, I have been enjoying the second season. It's a lot of second seasons for me this year. Mm -hmm. Sitting on a Hill, King of Harlem, and now Lego Masters has come back for season number two. I know John's going to have a lot to talk about this. I'm sure Mo (laughs) is as well. I'm going to talk a lot about John's media thing but just <laughs> before everybody goes hog wild with it lego masters is a hilarious show all about mm-hmm. that famous toy brick building thing with will arnett as the host mm-hmm. perfect and host. that man makes the show mm-hmm. if it wasn't for arnett honestly it would it'd be okay but arnett really is the perfect host for i agree it. he's the one that really gives it a personality Mm-hmm. Sure. Because all these folks are fish out of water. They're not used to being on TV. You know, some of them are a little socially awkward. And some he pulls them. people out of their shell and <laughs> helps them to have fun and make yeah. fun of things. Oh, yeah. He's, he's very self-deprecating, too. He's and- right on the edge of being too much sometimes, but he rides that line perfectly. Mm-hmm. I think he does. I mean, he, yeah. you know, he developed it with Arrested Development. You know, I think that's mm-hmm. where he really honed mm-hmm. his chops. And there are times in the series, like there's this one where he goes to interact with a couple of the brick builders in season two, one of the openers. And they're like, oh, you know, we love your voice. He's like, oh, yeah, my voice. What else? Tell me more. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me more about <laughs> and they're me. Like, and they're like, no, that's about it. And he's like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way he handles all situations. Yeah. So funny and clever. They do way over the top stuff. You can tell the show is built not just for adults like us who grew yeah. up with Legos, but also kids who are enjoying Legos as young people right now. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it almost could be disrespectful to the competition if Arnett was the only one there. But he has this wonderful, the the couple of brick masters that are there. They're grounded. They're the ones that are really doing the judging. And Mm -hmm. Arnett, Mm -hmm. he's a distance from that, so he can just Mm -hmm. have fun, which he does. Yeah, Yeah. right. No, absolutely. And let me tell you, and just from that first episode, wow, a couple of those people Mm. are just amazing. This stuff. Yeah. And a couple of them. Shouldn't be on this show. Yeah, a couple of them, <laughs> yeah, are terrible. But, you know, that's the way it works, right? You know, I think a lot of times they cast some of the people for their skills and some of the people for their stories. And that's oh, the way yeah. reality yeah, TV, sure. competition TV should be, mm-hmm. because you got to have somebody to root for who you know has got mm-hmm. no real chance of winning, but maybe they yeah. get through an episode or two. And mm-hmm, then you've got mm-hmm. the just out of this world talented group, right? That there's going to be yeah. two or three of those fighting it out to the end. Yeah, you pretty much know who's going to be the three. Yeah, the Sushi Brothers. Yeah. And then the other guys who have who fought last year's champions in some regional competitions yeah. and, and one and one. Yep. Right. Yeah. That's the brother, sister or husband, wife. I think it's a brother, sister. I maybe brother, sister, I think, is that one. Yeah, it's definitely good stuff. I enjoyed last year. Mm-hmm. It doesn't take long for me to start crying in this show because they do such a good <laughs> sh- job of highlighting the people and how how happy they are to be there and how important it is to their friends or their kids or their family back home. And when they're having trouble, you're like, oh, I'm so nervous for you. And I never never met these people, but they do such a good job of making you feel that. Most of these people are are not made for TV, right? No. I mean, (laughs) as far as like, but (laughs) they do a good job of like, you could see when they're building this stuff that that's their, like, they just love doing that. They're just totally into it. And they're in their element. They're in their element. You know, that's awesome to see. I mean, right now, what are they up to? Three episodes, I think, as we record this? Uh, Two, 
I think it's just two. two I think okay. yeah, two. I've seen two so out. far. Yeah, I think in my mind I've kind of already picked the the season winner. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, and yeah. I think I may have already seen my favorite sculpture in episode one. Uh, I don't really? want to spoil it for anybody, yeah. but episode one. They have this parade competition. Mm -hmm. So it's, yep. you know, building parade floats that are going to go <laughs> down this little track. And the whole object was to have motion as part mm -hmm. of the parade mm -hmm. float. And this one pair really yeah. knocked yeah. that one the hell out of the park. The, the one that got the gold oh, brick. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well deserved. Yeah. yeah. Head and shoulders above the others. That was great. That was, that was insane. With it the was together. perfect. It was like they, they exactly understood what the judges were looking for. Yeah. We want motion and we want color and we want vibrance and we want you. a story. Yeah. 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 And didn't somebody say, did you just start building this yeah. today? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, was just because this thing was like just there. It, it almost makes you wonder, maybe they had built something like that before and riffed off of it, but good on them. I mean, they're recycling yeah. something that wasn't here before. So yeah, you know, like way. you go to those cooking competitions, those people, they've all made mm -hmm. those dishes in the yeah. past. So they're, I agree. You know, yep. Good stuff. I'm happy. I really like it, but I want to get into what John is going to talk about because <laughs> okay. I've already seen it on the All list, right. and I have some definite opinions on this one. So, <laughs> you, George, really? No. <laughs> now, listen, if you're here to shit on my movie, you just hold on. Just wait. You just wait. I will <laughs> let you go through your whole thing. Thank you so much. Yeah, so I want to talk. I was looking forward last time we spoke, or maybe it was a couple shows ago. We missed out on so many films during the pandemic, mm -hmm. and this would have been a horror film that came out last you know, October, September time frame, and it didn't. And so the third official mainline film in the Conjuring series, The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, was released. And I was able to get out and see it. So I enjoyed the film. I don't want to say I had a problem with it, but there's some things that made it not really fit perfectly with the series. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was a horror film. It was a thriller. It was a right. whodunit. There were some supernatural things in it, um, but this was the most mature structured film, how they kind of used to be, they kind of like would show the Warrens doing something just to show who they were. And that was not connected. Then they get into the main story. This was one cohesive story that was connected from beginning to end. They did a little jumping forward, jumping back. And I enjoyed that more mature structure to the film. I also say that I, I am so in love with the portrayal of Ed and Lorraine Warren, the actors uh, that they have playing those characters. Their relationship is so powerful between them and you care about them and you know they had this long life and stuff, but there's still a sense of urgency and there's still a sense of what's going to happen next. I really, really liked what they did with it. I'm not happy that I didn't get a horror film out of it, but I'll get that in some other stuff as a part of the cohesive story arc and series of this Conjuring franchise. I like where it is. and I hope this isn't the last one. I want to get back to some more scary stuff and some more horror stuff. Okay. Before I give any kind of rating, I've said my piece on there. I know that all <laughs> of us have seen it. So mm -hmm. George Mo, one of you want to pick it up where you at? Well, George is itching to go. I just, oh, okay, no, no, George, no, George, no, no, you get no, no. I want Mo to go next. He oh, wants to oh, save him oh, for the last. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So I agree with pretty much everything you said, John. I, okay. I enjoyed it. It was a good movie. It was definitely not the best in the series, I don't think. Nope, nope. I just missed that supernatural element in this. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. like more jump scares than anything else, which again, it was fine. It was a good movie, but I guess my expectation was more of the puzzling it out and figuring out what happened and you know mm -hmm. all that stuff which i kind of and then even when they ultimately kind of figure out who it is and how they get to it it was just very kind of um, yawn okay yeah, yeah. Like, all right like i kind of you kind of knew what was going to happen sort of thing so yeah. what they say is that afterward movie i kind of wanted to look up the real story this was based on mm -hmm. and uh i looked at the picture of the people who the actual people yep. and let me tell you that guy looked like guilty as hell but that was just me <laughs> <laughs> well he did kill someone is the thing i mean no spoiler alert it's yeah. not whether or not he committed the crime it's whether or not he was, he was possessed, possessed by a demon right. when he did it right so i mean he was guilty as hell he did kill yeah. somebody so true stuff it was a good movie i enjoyed seeing it i especially enjoyed going out to the theater and seeing it mm -hmm. but was it my favorite of the group no was nah. it a decent movie yeah absolutely okay. so all right here now, you go george I know that you have currently been throwing yourself into the series. You hadn't watched the series before. You just started picking up on it, right? That's true. Okay. So now these are all fresh in your mind. So what did you think of The Devil Made Me Do It? All right. So first of all, both of you shut the hell up while I go through my thing now. I'm so here we word. go. <laughs> <laughs> wow, bossy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, first of all, I think you both did a disservice to the movie because neither of you really explained a little bit of the plot. So I'm going to do that real quick. That's fair point. I did all jump right, right in. Yep. Thank so you. Uh, there is a family. There's a father, 
mother, sister, and a little brother. The sister has a boyfriend who is also staying with the family. There's a possession of the little boy. Uh, Mm -hmm. The Warrens are called in to try and help unpossess the boy. The boyfriend of the sister invites the spirit into him to leave the boy alone, and mayhem ensues from there. That's all within the first five minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I disagree with you guys. I thought this was a great film. I really like this film. A a great film or a great horror film? Great horror film. Really? I really really enjoyed it. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, first of all, this was the first horror film in decades that reminded me of The Exorcist. I've seen plenty of possession Mm -hmm. films in the past, but the stuff that they did with the boy and the boyfriend, especially the little boy, Mm -hmm. holy hell, I was having flashbacks to The Exorcist, because I've told this story in the past. (laughs) The Exorcist was the only film that truly scared me, and Mm -hmm. still to this day has this thing in the back of my mind that I've I've watched it two or three times since Mm -hmm. then, but I really have a problem with that film. This is the first one that came even close to that. And I thought that what they did with this film is something that I've been really lacking in a lot of TV shows and movies lately. They made me care about the brother and Mm -hmm. the boyfriend right away. In Mm -hmm. the first five minutes, I couldn't give two shits about the parents. Who cares about the parents? They were throwaways. But (laughs) the boyfriend (laughs) and the little brother, they just showed like... 30 seconds worth of stuff for them interacting with each other. And I immediately was rooting for them. And I immediately Mm -hmm. wanted this whole thing to get solved in their favor. When the guy, I'm not going to say what happened to him in the end, but what happened to the boyfriend at the end, I was like, God damn it. Justice system. Really? (laughs) Come on, leave that kid alone. What you're describing is, um, and you know, because you just recently watched the first and the second conjuring. That's what these films do. Mm -hmm. They don't just focus on boogeyman, boogeyman, boogeyman. Man, they take time to know the families and the children so that you feel the stakes. And I don't disagree with that part of it, but I didn't feel the same level of horror in this one because everything was right in your face. Aside from jump scares, it was, well, I mean, like I said, I've described it, it felt more like a thriller than a horror. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I agree it's a great film. I disagree that it's a horror film. And you know, and I, I get, I understand why you say that. And a lot of people are bagging on jump scares lately. My son, even, is like, oh, it's just jump scares. Oh, there's nothing wrong with jump scares. Jump scares are an integral part of a horror story. I agree. It's they cheap. Absolute, no, it's, it's cheap. not cheap. Yeah, it's it's cheap. a part a lot of, of the genre. It's a are. tried and true tradition that belongs in the horror film. If you have a horror film that goes all the way through with not a single jump scare, that's not a horror film. That's a suspense film. I disagree. I, abs- we could, we'll have, we, maybe we need to have a debate backtrack about what makes a horror <laughs> film. I, I don't want to burn this. But I, jump scares, you can do that. You know, it's like, oh, so, oh, cat jumps in the window and it makes you jump. I would rather you build that terror and suspense by showing me glimpses of something and letting me see it and then hiding it than just, oh, boom. Oh, somebody slammed a door. Somebody's in a box, whatever, you know, crazy crap like that. But that's my point. You can use the jump scares, either false ones or real ones, mm. to do that, to build all that tension. And people do. If you're not sure when it's going to mm-hmm. happen, when it's going to come, and if it's going to be the real jump scare or if something's going to come right after it, that can really build tension. And the whole point of a horror film is to scare you. It's mm-hmm. called a jump scare for a reason because it does scare you. Maybe temporary. It may be in wrestling terms a cheap pop, but it's still it part of the genre. They're lazy. It's, it's they're not lazy. lazy at all. <laughs> it's lazy as hell. Okay, it's not but, lazy. but I God, will say I, I'm sitting here trying to defend your freaking franchise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you got into it and you enjoyed this. I would probably give this three and a half to three and three quarter tokens out of five. I'd say I really enjoyed it. I would have paid full price for it. They mentioned early on this like could be the end of the, the series or the end. Of, every story has an end. I hope this is not the end of seeing Ed and Lorraine because they have so many more cases they could cover. And I want to say my favorite scene in the whole thing was a scene that wasn't there. There was a jump cut between oh. when the attorney said, I will defend this boy with this defense if you convince me. And then they say, well, yeah, come over. Introduce you to Annabelle. Jump cut to yes, a week was, later. A great she's in court making the filing, the filing the defense. And I'm like, she wasn't just what? filing defense. She was scared out of yeah. her mind. And she was she- petrified. Yes. Yeah. I'm like, I'm so glad they didn't show me that. I was oh, yeah. hoping, please jump to her being convinced. And they did. And that was delicious. I yeah, love that. was nice. <laughs> and the actors had the perfect face. Like, yeah. I have seen some crap go down at the Warren yeah. house. I'm here. <laughs> I see some know shit, it's real. Man. <laughs> like, as soon as this case is over, I'm fucking out. I'm yeah. moving to I'm done. Tahiti or something. I'm done. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. The Conjuring Devil Made Me Do It. Love that film. Just not a horror film. Jump scares. It's a fucking good. horror film. <laughs> okay. Mo. It's as much a horror film as this is a podcast. <laughs> What the hell does that even mean? <laughs> Mo, can you cleanse our palate? What have you been checking out in media? Oh, oh I'm sorry. are you guys done? Are you ready? <laughs> nope. Probably not. another hour and a half on this right. one still. 
<laughs> well, well you'll, you'll fix this in edit. So yeah, I watched the uh, first episode of Loki. Ah, mm, you were looking okay. forward to it. Right? I was looking forward to it. And I enjoyed the first, I mean, you know, the first episodes are setting up a lot of stuff, right? So there's usually, you know, usually not a lot of action, a lot of stuff, but the stuff they set up in this, I was like, it's making me really look forward to the rest of the series. Have either of you guys checked this out yet? No. Yeah, I have not. checked it out a little bit. Yeah. So if anybody who hasn't watched or doesn't know what it's about, yeah. can you describe kind oh, of what, sure. what's the, what the premise is? So um, if anyone who follows the MCU franchise, there was that Which scene. Everyone. It was just everybody. And in the last movie, when they're trying to get the Infinity Stones back, there's a, a scene where they drop the cube and Loki is like in handcuffs and stuff. And he sees everyone's kind of paying attention, picks up the cube and he zaps away. Mm-hmm. It picks up right from that spot. Right. Ah, that, because, that moment. Right. Because apparently he's in trouble because he's been disrupting the timeline. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And there's like basically time cops who are there to follow some grand plan of how things are supposed to happen. And they get rid of things that are taking things off, creating branches on the timeline. And apparently Loki is a huge branch, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> they describe the disruption in the timeline yeah. in very much the way that it was described to to Banner in yeah. in the last Avengers film. Oh, yeah, yeah, right? very much so. Right. Uh, he went to see, you know, whatever the, the, the ancient one, Doctor Strange, Super Ninja. Yeah, the ancient one described how the timelines work. The same thing. They've created this entire time variance yeah. authority. The authority. <laughs> Magic doesn't work in there. And they apparently are above everything. I mean, oh my God, there's a point where they're trying to get back the, the what's the, 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 the Tesseract. Yeah. It's in a drawer with a bunch of infinity stones. They say, yeah, we use those as paperweights. And nobody cares about those. <laughs> <laughs> there's a Honus Wagner baseball card in that same drawer. They just don't care about stuff there. They're above the rest of the universe, apparently. Yeah. They set it up well. Oh yeah. And what I really like about it is uh, they're focusing on Loki's character, which mm-hmm. his character for a villain, I thought always had a lot of levels to it. Mm-hmm. He could be an anti-hero. He could be a villain. He could be the hero if he needs to be. And there's a little psychotherapy in there. The guy's like, you know, why do you do what you do? What's your end game? What are you trying to get to? And it was, I thought it was really interesting. And it seems like Loki's going to become like one of these cops to help him fix, you know, a particular case. No one yeah, there's a bit of a twist here. at the end because yeah. they're after someone who the time variance authority is not able to apprehend. And it looks like they're setting him up to be a, a rogue agent who has the ability to help them uniquely yeah, somehow. somehow. So yeah. definitely looking forward to this. I thought it was really well done. And they done just and dropped one episode, right? Is this is like eight or 10. It's a limited series, right? Yep. And Dizzy's only doing them once a week. So yeah, I think that's good for them. That means that we talk about them over and over. You hear yes. about it week after week. You don't just binge them. And uh, yeah, yeah, I, I enjoyed it too. Hi, I'm Christina Yerling Biro, host of the podcast Pop Culture Confidential. Join me as I go way behind the scenes with some of the most influential people in entertainment and media. Hear actors such as Succession's Brian Cox talk about his favorite characters to play. There always has to be a mystery. The audience have to be in a situation where they want to know what's going on. Meet studio execs like Pixar chief Pete Docter and learn his secret on how he makes us cry. Emotion is our first language. And so many others who are defining popular culture, from Obama speechwriter David Litt to Top Chef host Padma Lakshmi. We don't often think about food politically or we don't want to, but it really is. Join me. Search for Pop Culture Confidential wherever you get your podcasts. Mama thinks it's special. How do I know? Because my Skippy tells me so. Of all the national brands, only Skippy has both high protein and less sugar. Glad my mama put Skippy in our lunch. Skippy for good nutrition. You're listening to Gen X Grown Up. But if you have a friend who's not yet listening, why not? Tell them about us. They'll thank you later. So let's get into tech and toys. I have something mm-hmm. today to talk about. Thanks to John, who actually ordered this for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm going to give credit where credit is due. I, the I only do what I reason can. you have something for tech and toys is because one of us bought it for you? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one of the three of us who has his own income that's not beholden to anybody else. Well, what's your tech this time? I don't have to have one. I had one 47 <laughs> weeks in deflect, a row. Deflect, deflect. I'm deflecting here. Okay, but anyway, here's one. It's a uh, a micro arcade cuber. Ah. So I got it in the box. I'm probably going to do a video on it because it's pretty damn cool. Let me tell you, these things are like credit card size. 
Oh, the credit card one. Okay, so, so yeah. this is the credit card mm-hmm. one. Yeah. This is the one that, okay. Honestly, I was expecting like an LCD version of the game or something like that, you know, kind mm-hmm. of a chintzy. It's not, it's like the real deal. They seem to be improving on them, don't yeah. they? Yeah, I was like, holy cow. I mean, there's some flaw, like the sounds and there's something, but generally speaking, I was immediately impressed because the gameplay and all this stuff, I'm like, wow, this is like the real game. And they fit it in such a tiny, tiny package. I mean, the hard part is for me really, honestly, is seeing the screen. I can my, relate. Yeah. But other than that though, it's great. It's, it's it's a lot of fun. I already played it quite a bit. So it's, it's how does it compare thing. to not is obviously not the original Qbert. How does it compare to other portable ones that you have seen or played? The gameplay feels like the original gameplay. Hmm. It really does. It's just okay. that it's a little blockier because I guess because of the size and the screen size. A smaller I mean, the, resolution. The screen is like an inch by like three quarters of an inch or something like that. It's <laughs> super, super freaking tiny. And there's a couple of things readers. on it that I don't like, but but generally speaking, though, I mean, they, again, the sound's kind of up, but I'm like, okay, for something that size, what do you expect? You know, I'm not expecting gotcha. like a Bose yeah. sound system or something like that out of it. But it plays well. It, it's re- There's no battery. You just charge it. USB rechargeable. I'm like, shoot, this is something that may stay in my pocket. Like Keep that in the top <laughs> yeah. pocket all the time just yeah, get your cubert fix yeah i hear you so it's definitely very very cool i know you've looked at a bunch of these john like some of the other ones right yeah yeah sound is usually the biggest problem with them they're mm-hmm. pretty blippy they don't have much range in terms of what no, sounds they can produce titty. for some reason yeah but you know hey that's okay it's a compromise that's what i got very excited thank you john so john oh, what do you, you have because whatever i don't know what the hell this is i saw it on the list and i'm <laughs> curious <laughs> yeah so over time we have looked at ways that you can play emulated games. Of course, we play, mm-hmm. you know, main games on our PCs or on you know, Raspberry Pis or whatever. But I always like the idea of these pre-built handhelds that are designed from the ground up to be emulation devices. And I had one for a time that kind of looked like a Nintendo DS, like you could flip it open and it had a bunch of games on it. I know that you had one, Mo, that you got, yeah. got you, for Christmas some years ago, the Blaze one that was kind yeah, of a which worked. handheld it was great. thing. It was cool. Mm-hmm. Yep. But I was kind of itching for what's the newest technology? Because the one I have is at least three or four years old and you know technology has come so far since then and miniaturization so i found one by a company called pow kitty pow kitty yeah pow kitty that they're well known apparently if you're you frequent these little handheld devices well known are they do you know (laughs) them i don't know no no not me (laughs) i've never heard of them before (laughs) until now there's something vaguely dirty about the name pow kitty (laughs) no let's not talk about that part but no the device is called the rgb 10 max and to give you a visualization of it, because you're listening on a podcast, just picture the Nintendo Switch Lite, the smaller one that the the, 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 the Joy Cons don't come off of. Yeah, yep, it's all connected, and that's what this is. It's uh, it runs emulation already baked in. It runs Emulec, which is uh, very much like what you would see like on a Raspberry Pi. That's kind of like Retro Pi. That's that kind of thing. It has a five inch IPS screen on it, that's good high size. definition screen, like a 850 by 480 or so resolution. So it's plenty okay. big enough for most retro games built-in battery and what they have that's a little sketchy is that it comes preloaded with mm-hmm. thousands and thousands of games that clearly are not legitimately licensed that you should oh, not be should not really? be on this device but i've been playing it a lot i mean it has you know atari stuff it has all the way up to playstation one caliber games can be played on it nintendo huh. 64 stuff I paid 160 bucks for it. Okay. And that's for the handheld, for all the games on it. And it has an SD card right in it, comes with an SD card. So you can go and load your own more games onto it. What emulations does it have? Does it play like pretty much anything? Can it play, you know, yeah, yeah. Game Boy, anything all that up fun to, stuff? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Everything up to roughly PlayStation 1 era, right? So okay. you're talking an Odyssey 2 stuff is in there. Wow. Amiga stuff is in there. Well, George, I played Another World on this thing because I could. Right. <laughs> Lemmings is on there computer stuff. It's just one of those things where if you hear us talk about emulation and playing old games and you're like, I don't have any idea how to even get started with that thing. I wouldn't know where to begin. This thing is you open it out of the box and turn it on and you can play old arcade games. You can play old Nintendo games. You can play old Atari games. And I've not had it run into anything that it can't really do that's included on it. And I've loaded some right. later stuff on it. That's kind of eh, this can't quite handle it, but for everything that comes preloaded and configurable and the fact that you can hook it up to your computer and add things to it, it has that front end. That's very much like, like uh, what's the one, the recall box that you love, George, just very much like that, right? Where you can, right. Uh, you can get the thumbnails and the, the game videos so that you're flipping through it. It's a very rich, immersive experience. And all of that on this flat little thing that literally fits in your hip pocket. It's maybe 20% 
larger than a power cell phone these days. Amazing so, stuff. Just to give you a heads up, I went and clicked the link. So I was, uh, maybe I'll go buy this. Mm -hmm. So there's two different versions. There's a 128 gig version and there's a 64 gig version. They come in orange or black. Mm -hmm. Everything except for the 64 gig black is out. Are they really? Yep. Now they say they're in stock soon, but you know okay. how that goes with Amazon. You can't really tell. And of the 64 gig black, it claims that there are only three left in stock. Wow. This is brand new. I mean, this isn't like an old thing that I stumbled across finally. It just released. In fact, I ordered it maybe two months ago and it just delivered like two weeks ago. It finally showed up. My fear is that, you know, you mentioned earlier, there's some sketchy things going on <laughs> with all these games on here. They may not come back. How they get away with it, I don't know. It's one of those things where if, oh, well. if you don't get caught, it's not illegal. I think that's the approach that they take. And if somebody says something to them, they'll back it down. But the good news is, even if you get one, it doesn't have all all those things on it, you can plug it in your computer and load them up. Well, and the 64 gigs is the card that's in it, right? So, I mean, in theory, you could just copy the contents off and put a 128 gig card in there. Yeah, for sure. So it's something that you should worth checking out if it's something that you thought about, but didn't know how to approach it because it's just, it's a consumer device. You turn it on and off you go. Well, hurry up. <laughs> yeah, right. Keep an eye on it. Put it your, I'll give you a link, Mo, if somebody oh, yeah. wants to take a closer look. It's really interesting thing. It's one of those things that's going to go in my travel bag and it's great for waiting for a plane, waiting for a meeting to happen. I don't have any complaints about it. It's a cool little device. Cool. Coming up on 5-Minute News, I'm Anthony Davis. You might think it's partisan because maybe it's critical of one side or the other, but it's not, it's just the truth. And I think that's also something that's kind of unusual for Americans listening to the radio or to podcasts because the news landscape in the States has been so partisan for so many decades. So 5-Minute News is verified, truthful, independent, unbiased and essential world news daily. M -m 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 milk cake Each episode of Gen X Grown Up has show notes loaded with links where you can learn more about our topics. And there's even more to see and hear over at GenXGrownUp.com. This is the main event of the podcast. For the three in attendance locally and the millions listening around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time! Three rounds! GXG Gaming Division. And it's time to <laughs> get into this game segment. I don't know how to come off of that. Um, <laughs> it's a hard act to follow. It is a hard mm -hmm. act to follow. Let's go ahead and this week, let's start with John. John, what are you uh, playing around with this week? Yeah, so that's uh, also appropriate. It's almost like we planned it because hot on the heels of that Pow Kitty RGB 10 Max that I got, <laughs> there's something that I discovered that someone that's deep into the realm of, of emulation is going to go, well, oh, you dummy, that's been around for a long time. But this was brand new to me. I never heard of this. Remember the days of the Xbox 360 when we played consoles a lot mm -hmm. and how we were obsessed with achievements, right? 100%ing. Yeah. Right, 100% <laughs> this game, unlock this thing and find all the hidden those things mm -hmm. and those sorts of things. Are you aware that there is a system in place that globally is able to track achievements in old retro video games through emulation? What? Uh, I wasn't aware. Kind of interested to know how they do it, but let me yeah. let me start with you, George. So I'm playing some Galaga. Okay, destroy three Stingray, transform. Wait, wait, wait. Galaga never had achievements. What the fuck? Oh, I know. Destroy three Stingrays together. That's worth an achievement. Hey, here's one for have four reserve fighters, and that gives you 10 achievement points. Okay. Perfect challenge gives you 10 achievement points. So they have been able to figure out the checksums in these old games, not just arcade games, NES games, Super Nintendo, all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And you can have an ongoing global achievement list. Mo, you're a Qbert fan. Yeah. How about make Coily jump off five times before the game is over? Five achievement points. I could do that. Collect three green balls and use a time freeze before the game is over. Five achievement points. There are things that you know how to do. And some of them are things that you have to work at, like ride six discs without sending Coily off the edge. Oh, wow. Like weird corner case stuff that you have to, let's just like the old achievement 
achievements, right? But so where's how are they tracking yeah. this? Yeah. Isn't this crazy? I know. I was my mind was blown too. So I mean, I have Donkey Kong achievements. You know, get to this level, you know, make a fruit fall, a Donkey Kong Junior, and smash two of the traps instead of one. This is some black magic voodoo that they figured <laughs> out here. Now it doesn't work in Mame, but it works in oh. other emulators. So RetroArch is was what you have okay. to use. You know, the open kind of like the, the core based thing. Retro I mean, that Arch. cuts out ninety percent of the retro gaming market if you're not going to work with Mame. Well, a lot of people are huge because of RetroPie uses the RetroArch cores and those sort of things. So it's becoming more popular. It's made me download it and try to figure it out because my Pow Kitty handheld automatically synced up with retro achievements. I had to go create an account. Okay. And when I started playing, I was playing Donkey Kong and boop, achievement unlocked. It told me what I did. It popped in the corner. I'm like, are you kidding me? So huh. now not every single game, because the way it seems to work is that you're right, George, there was never achievements in Galaga yeah. or Cubert or Donkey Kong, right? They figured out that what it's all just math. When certain things happen, if you have X number of extra ships or you've done certain number of things, they can tell that that math is present in the memory of the game, satisfy that criteria and able to pop an achievement and tell you you've done that so- thing. I, I get how they do that, but yeah. there has to be a connection between your emulation platform yep. and their website, database, right, whatever yeah. it is. Of that course. On, yep. Right. Right. So you have to set that up in whatever emulate, like you were talking about RetroArch. Somewhere in all RetroArch now, there's a way to connect to this thing or? Mm-hmm. There, yeah, there is. There is. Absolutely. Okay. Huh. You put in your username and password and make sure that you are connected to the network. Uh, in the case of my little handheld, I connected to Wi-Fi. And so it goes and talks to the Retro Achievements website, knows what the criteria are, and pops up achievements just like you're playing an old Xbox. It's the same experience. And I'm assuming you got to use username and password, login credentials or That's something. That's right. But you do it one time for RetroArch and for every core you're playing, if the game has achievements, it automatically recognizes them. Interesting. Hmm. It opened up a whole new world of, oh, go back and play like Donkey Kong Jr. Get through the entire level without dropping any fruit, for example. Like, well, I would never do that. But here's a way to <laughs> game the game to kind of unlock achievements and get more experience out of it. And it is making me dig to figure out how to make RetroArch work properly. I, I think I'm <laughs> sensing that we're going to have to we're probably going to have to come out with a youtube video or talk about it during a podcast or something we're going to have to talk about the pluses or minuses a comparison of mame versus retroarch because mm. if you're right that retroarch is becoming more widely adopted thanks to the retro mm-hmm. pie mm-hmm. and mame i i've even heard some people say things like i don't like mame for blah 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 i know that mame is what you and i started out with john but yeah, sure. i do have some criticisms of it like having to make sure you have the right version of the executable with whatever roms you have mm-hmm. sure that was a thing I remember from back when we started, but it is now. Mm-hmm. I don't know if RetroArch is any better or not, but we might need to do some more investigation if people are interested. I mean, Mame's getting kind of long in the tooth. I mean, it's been around for a while, you know, so... I'm not surprised that there's a young upstart that's probably doing things a little bit yeah. better. I'm personally still learning, and I would not have been trying to learn had I not realized that I could get Donkey Kong achievements. I'm like, well, I'm going <laughs> to have to figure this out, apparently. Wait, now can you share the achievements with other people? Like, can other people see your achievements? Yeah, you can go and see what achievements I have, and you can compare yourself to other players. That's Absolutely. That's, that's where it comes yeah, really I'm looking fun. on their website right now. They list like a whole bunch of different people who just got some Mortal Kombat Sega CD achievements today. And it's like, added at 20 colon 28 today. Yep. And if you search for Gen X Grown Up, which is my user that I set up for this. Okay, that's bullshit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I figured I'd do a video. How do you get to set that up? Mo and I don't. Well, you can you can do George at Gen X Grown Up. <laughs> Mother <laughs> Hey, first one there, out of the gate, I win. <laughs> <laughs> so it's something to, to check out if you have do emulation at all. And sure. I've got to learn more about it because I know, I know, George, you want to get some Galaga achievements now that you know they exist. I, I do. I'm looking right now. You've got Donkey Kong Jr. and Donkey Kong achievements. Mm-hmm. Those so are far. the two that you have. Yep. Or at least that's what it's showing on your wall. That's what I have so far. Yep, exactly. And you can see what I have and what I did and the date that I unlocked it. And it's all <laughs> universal. And this is you can play a Super Nintendo game. You can play a Genesis game. Tons of other retro stuff have achievements now. Cool. And it definitely, I can see it having that completionist vibe because it's like you're 14% complete in this and 20 something mm-hmm. complete. Oh, geez. Yeah. What a world we live in. Oh, this is so cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The retro achievements. That's what I'm looking at. So Mo, how about you? What have you been playing? So I'm playing a game that actually it's a 
uh, I guess I call it, it's a reboot of an old game. It's called Startopia. I don't know if you guys ever heard mm. of this one. I don't think that so. Kind of sounds familiar, but anything with Star and Opia probably fits that bill, right? Yeah, true, <laughs> yeah. true. So the original game came out in 2001, and actually it won like all these different awards. Where basically you're managing a futuristic space station, and it's kind of shaped like one of these donuts that spins, you know, so the yep, okay. artificial gravity yep. field. And there's three levels. What makes it fun is that you, you're basically trying to build like the ultimate rest stop for aliens, <laughs> traveling <laughs> aliens, essentially. <laughs> It's a lot of tongue-in-cheek humor in it. It's just super fun, but like different aliens have different needs. And you're also trying, you do trading. I mean, it's it gets really complex. And what really makes the game fun is that you could play just like open world sandbox, right? Where you're just got this open, empty space station. And you just fill it with stuff. And of course, you have to research things and, you know, you have to get things over time. Or you could play against other people and you're all trying to take over the station. And so in order to take over somebody else's segment, um, you actually have to like fight them for it. <laughs> so it's a little Wait, bit you're of like- fighting for segment? of the alien truck stop I, yeah I, you lost me somewhere how did it turn from turning a, this into an alien truck stop into fighting for power well because there's only you think of that this donut is divided up like into slices and okay. so you control like a slice at a time that you could grow oh uh, okay all so right when your slices right. collide and you're like there's no more slices on level one except for john owns them the only way for me to take uh, it so is you're like conquering other areas so right. that you can have more truck stop real estate kind exactly of thing. and then you can build oh. more stuff make more money and all that stuff so and there's just like so much humor and your little alien people i mean they get sick if you don't have enough medical stuff when people die a little alien pops out of their chest and starts like attacking people (laughs) of course (laughs) pirates will jump on your ship every now and then and terrorize people i mean it's all these little things in there that just kind of keep it goofy keep it fun but it's actually a pretty serious strategy game we get right down to it Hmm. and is this something that you're playing on pc or steam it's on steam yeah the reason why i remember so much is that it was also a game that only came out on the pc back in 2001 when everything else was console so I played the crap out of it back then. And uh, when I just saw that, oh my God, a brand new one came out. So I jumped all over it and picked up and it's just, it plays like the original. They, of course they add a little bit of complexity, but not so much where it kind of loses its fun. Now you say, it, it, is it a sequel or is it like a, like a remaster kind of thing? I think thing? it's a remaster. It's a remaster kind of game. Okay. If they remastered it, they added a little bit more, some more features, a couple extra alien races, that kind of thing. I'm happy they didn't go too crazy and try to make this more complicated mm-hmm. or, you know what I mean? Where you start, it's no longer fun anymore. You know, it just becomes a drudge. Sounds like one of those game of the year re-release type of things. Sort of, kind of. I mean, not that it was a game of the year or anything like that but sounds like it's got that same kind of treatment yeah it did it's somebody and whoever like loved it originally i think they just said we gotta redo this and upgrade it with better graphics and all that now stuff that we can all right yep. it's called startopia you remember Star-topia. what you paid for it any idea uh i think i paid 24 bucks Ooh, all right for a strategy game that feels kind of steep for me even though it sounds interesting you get uh, 24 y- bucks. Y- it will suck you in trust me okay all right all right cool startopia yep that's what i got so george what you got for us well i i needed to make sure that i had something for my segment lest i get moified and get made fun of <laughs> you get for, the mo treatment yeah <laughs> so i was trying to decide do i want to play something on steam on the pc do i want to pick up a console and plug it back into the tv or something and i ended up deciding you know what short on time let me just see what's in the google play store and google play store you know it changes from time to time and i haven't looked in the google play store in forever and so i was interested to see that when i logged in one of the first banners up there is our choices for you, you know, based on what you play and how many hours you play stuff, here's something we think you'd like. Okay. And in the free games, the very first one on the list was a game called Retro Bowl. Oh, we're all retro today. Okay. And this is a pixelized Tecmo Bowl style football game, but it's not just the arcade action style game. It's a management game. So much like any of the simulators of sports games before where you're the manager of the team and you pick out the personnel and you hire Mm -hmm. the coaches and all that kind of stuff. That's what's built into this little phone game as well as a very fun kind of it's it's like it was the child of Tecmo Bowl and those old one bit handheld consoles from Mattel that we used to play when we were kids. It's <laughs> <Okay. laughs> an interesting description. Yeah. Yeah. So so you're actually picking your team and then you play? Yes, you pick your team and okay. your team has a certain amount of characters that you control, certain amount of players. You don't start off by picking every offensive player and every defensive player and every sp- you don't do that. You're allowed to have a certain amount of people in your roster that help your team through different ways. I've paid for the full version of the game. You can play it for free, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, and the full version is like $1.99. So it's super cheap. 
Oh, terrible. Oh, my whole, whole two dollars. Yeah. So I get like a 12 <laughs> yeah. man roster because of that. Otherwise yeah. you get like a eight or a 10 man roster. Okay. Obviously that's enough to not even fill out a side really, unless you have the 12 man one. But so you remember when you would play Mattel, those little eight bit games, you know, little red led moving back and forth. Like we saw in guardians of the galaxy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're always only moving in one direction on the screen. Right. Mm-hmm. And you're only ever playing offense. If you remember, you're not playing defense unless it was maybe one of the later ones. This is the same thing. When you're playing this tech mode, Bowl version of that, you're only moving one direction on the screen and you're only ever playing offense. When you're on defense and the other team is on offense, it's just giving you updates. Quarterback threw the ball for 20 yards. Oh, your defensive lineman forced a fumble and you've recovered it now. Okay. It, that's all it does. And it just speeds through those. So even though it's a two minute quarter, it really only plays for about 30, 35 seconds. So it's a okay. really fun and fast way to get through an entire football game. It's very bite sized. So when I saw you had this on the list, I'm like, well, I, I want to see what it is because I was curious. And the first thing you described would have been the first thing that scared me off because I'm not a huge sports fan and now I'm managing players and their mm-hmm. salaries and their <laughs> players. And right away I saw everything about it is watered down for a mobile app, which was great yeah. for me. You know, you're only managing your franchise players. Keep these people happy and everybody else will fall in line. Mm-hmm. So it makes it very like quick to pick up, very bite-sized. Mm-hmm. If you're just a fan of the old football games, but not a fan of managing every player in a football team, I might actually buy it. It was pretty cool just in the like 10 minutes I played it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, I'm into season three of my team that I started off with right Holy now. Holy crap. How long have you been playing? Like, I don't know, probably 35 minutes worth of time. Like I said, it doesn't take that long to go through a whole season. Wow. Oh, um, wow. Huh. When I started off, I wanted to go with San Francisco. That's my favorite professional football team. And I said, well, you can do that or you can take this really weak team and see if you can develop it. So it gave me the New York Jets. I was like, OK, <laughs> I'll do that. Well, it started me off in the playoffs of year one. So I was already at the end of the year. Okay. Oh, right. my team okay. had like a six and 10 record or some ridiculously yeah. horrible record. And we got bounced out really quickly. So I went into year two. You do a mock draft, which is kind of fun. You have uh, three hmm. rounds of the draft and you start off with just one pick in each round. And then as you're playing the game, you can do trades and other things where you can get more picks for the next draft. So it can be very detailed if you want to you can pick up free agents Mm -hmm. and you can sit people on the bench and you can hire new coaching staff if you don't like the ones you have and then there's fun little gimmicky type things that pop up like in between games uh this player was caught with marijuana find him or praise him (laughs) really (laughs) yeah (laughs) little things like that and it's so it it keeps it lively and fun I will probably continue to play this. You know, I have four mobile app games that I just keep in rotation and I really only play them for the daily achievement things. Cause I like that. It's a new puzzle each day and I get a little achievement. This one, since I downloaded it, I really haven't played any of those other games. Wow. Um, even out of obligation, I've just been playing this. So it's really fun. I really like this. Mm. One. And I need a new game. The two I have in rotation are garbage games. I only <laughs> play them because they're easy to play when you're doing nothing. Yep. Well, I, you know, <laughs> go to Google Play on your phone yeah. and see what it suggests. It might suggest something that you really enjoy. That's what happened to me. Mm. I don't, but, but now I want to play this, though. So well, you can play this. <laughs> You'll play, you can play this, too. Yeah. They made more than one copy. Retro Bowl. Retro, Retro Bowl. Bucks. Mm. All right. I love it. All right. Cool. I'm Ken Harbaugh, host of Warriors in Their Own Words, a podcast that presents the unvarnished, unsanitized truth of what we have asked of those who defend this nation. As a country, we need these stories more than ever. Stories from Americans who have borne the battle, including 30-year-old remastered interviews with veterans from World War I recounting their time in the trenches of Europe, and with veterans from World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and from our most recent conflicts in Iraq, Afghanistan, and other battlefields Americans may never have heard of. Hear their stories by listening to Warriors in Their Own Words wherever you find podcasts. Carnation Instant Breakfast. You're going to love it in an instant. You're going to love it in an instant. So good and frosty, rich and tasty. Carnation Instant Breakfast. You're going to love it in an instant. You'll also love that Carnation Instant Breakfast is now even easier to make with this free shaker mug. See specially marked boxes for mail-in offer details. Carnation Instant Breakfast. In regular and no sugar added. You're going to love it in an instant. If you're a diehard Gen X grown-up, you can pledge your support by clicking join on YouTube or by becoming a patron at genxgrownup.com slash Patreon.
as we wind out the back half of the show, we always like to take a few moments here toward the end to talk about what we're looking forward to. I mentioned uh, this is episode 100, so we're taking this opportunity to uh, kind of move the chess pieces around the board a little bit <laughs> and change up our format a tad. Something we realized was that for every segment, we each pick something we're talking about and things get left by the wayside. There are things we're excited about that we don't want to take up our media slot or take up our toy slot or tech slot or whatever. And so we're going to expand the looking forward segment a little bit to highlight a few things we're talking about, but we'll still have a key thing that we are looking forward to. Uh, and so uh, to give you an idea of what we're talking about, I will go first of our <laughs> looking forward segment for this episode 100. <laughs> Uh, for, me, <laughs> for me, I'm looking forward to uh, going out to see In the Heights, the new film that just dropped, Lin-Manuel Miranda, based on another great uh, stage production that he had, just came out, and I can't wait to go see that. I just discovered a new series that came out in 2010. It's a stop-motion animation like the old Rankin-Bass cartoons called Frankenhole, about Frankenstein's son, not the monster, the man, Frankenstein's son has created these time portals that he jumps around through time and messes with people and bolts people together and makes new monsters. But the main thing that I am looking forward to is a new film coming out June 16th in the theaters, The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Yeah. <laughs> if you've not seen this trailer, Mo, we got to throw oh, this I've in the it. show notes. Yeah. I probably laughed out loud four times in the trailer. In the, yeah. Hopefully it's not all the good scenes. Okay, I hope oh, not. Yeah. This is what Ryan Reynolds, Selma Hayek, Gary Oldman, Morgan Freeman, Sam Jackson, Antonio Banderas. How are you I not mean, listing Sam Jackson first? Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. makes well, that movie? He and Ryan Reynolds together? That's the whole movie. Oh my yeah. goodness. It looks so, so funny. They are the best version of Riggs and Murtaugh. Riggs and Murtaugh. They yeah. are the best version of that. Oh my God. Oh, this looks ridiculously funny. I can't wait to see that one. So that is what I am looking at and what I am looking forward to. George, how about you? Yeah. So uh, Holy Moly season three opens on the 17th <laughs> of June. That's the little putt-putt golf competition yeah, oh, right. game. Mm -hmm. That's hilarious. Uh, the Flash season seven finale is June 29th. I'm definitely looking forward to that. It's been a really good season so far. Dark Side of the Ring, John, is one that you, it might get you into professional wrestling. This is a documentary style series oh, that they okay. explore the underbelly of professional wrestling. It's in season oh, wow. three right now. That's oh, really a lot of fun. Um, okay, they're maybe. nearing the end of this season. But the thing that I am most looking forward to between now and our next podcast is Amazon Prime Day, oh, June geez. 21st and 22nd. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> You're an addict. You you just said how much you hated Amazon two shows ago. I do, but I enjoy <laughs> saving money more but it's a deal <laughs> it's a deal what so a bargain. well the reason why i'm looking forward to it is uh like i've told you guys before my youngest son is finally ready to leave the nest he's moving into uh, the town home that i bought for his brothers so they're all three going to live over there and he's looking for a new tv for that house for the living room ah, i think that's kind of okay. the pin it's they they said well little brother if you're going to move in with us you have to bring a tv for the living room because they didn't have one previously so <laughs> i'm going to see if i can find a good deal on amazon prime day I bet you do. Yeah. I bet you do. Yeah. They would be fools not to have a TV on Amazon Prime Day. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> if it's time to get one, that's it. Mo, how about you? What do you sure. got coming up? Uh, I'm looking forward to working with my son. Uh, he's actually into this whole fish tank designing thing, like coming up with these like really cool designs. So he's going to come over and build one for me. Nice. Looking forward to reading Old Man's War, which is a science fiction book that was recommended by one of our friends out on Discord. Oh, an older book or a new book? It's a series. It's newer. It's been out okay. like, it's like five, 10 years, something like that. Okay, sure. But I'm always looking for a good hardcore sci-fi book and someone recommended it so I'm looking forward to reading that I'm um, looking forward to the return of Rick and Morty huh? for the second half of the season June 20th finally coming up mm -hmm. and but I'm really kind of looking forward to is the season two of a series called evil do you guys remember that did you watch it the evil. first season of that is that the one about the like the damien omen kid is it that one or no, no? it's the Something one where, else. where the guy who played luke cage he's in it and he was a priest or is a priest and they basically it's kind of like an x-files except it's all supernatural kind of investigation where the church sends him to investigate these supernatural things that doesn't even ring a bell did we talk about it on the show uh i think season one it was probably at least somebody looking forward i don't know if i talked about okay. it as a thing gotcha. But it's on season two, so it's on Apple TV, but the second season starts June 20th. Let me tell you, John, I mean, you may dig it. It's like I said, it's like, the, it's very much x file where mm -hmm, it has like mm -hmm. the skeptic and the believer, and they go into investigate supernatural events and whether or not it's real. He's investigating for the church. She's doing it more from a skeptic point of view, except this one, there's not like ambiguity though. I think they're pretty much, you know, these are, most of these are supernatural, but they, okay. but it's an interesting dynamic and it was a really great show. So I'm looking forward to the second season of it. All right. Evil on Evil. Apple TV. Yep. All right. 
that is just going to wrap it up for this edition, the episode 100 edition 100. of the podcast. Before we leave, I want to quickly highlight DeForte of DeForte Game Reviews. He joined us as a member over on YouTube since we last spoke, and he what? became a Patreon patron. Wow. Also, wow. Both. Nice. That's awesome. Double dip. So we want to thank you. We always want to call out those that join us or that they upgrade their membership. Always call you out here. That is going to wind it up for this episode. We'll be back in two weeks with a regular episode, but we'll be back next week with our backtrack edition of the show. Mm. And I am so looking forward to the 41st anniversary of the Blues Brothers coming uh, out in theaters. I've already started rewatching this, preparing for the show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love this movie <laughs> this so is a much. Great movie. Orange Whip, Orange Whip, three Orange Which Whips. I, I have no <laughs> reference for what you're saying because I have not watched this film yet. Uh, George is going to watch it for the first time yeah. leading into this pod. Uh, you're in for a I've treat. I've watched segments of it here and there, probably seen about 20 minutes of it, but it is one of my all time favorites. And we're going to celebrate everything about the Blues Brothers. That's going to be on the backtrack coming your way next Thursday. Until then, I am John. George, thank you so much for being here. Yes, sir. Mo, you know I appreciate you. Oh, always fun, man. Fourth listener, it's you, though, we appreciate most of all, and we will talk to you next time. Bye-bye. See you guys. Take care, everybody. No life, no fun. Don't you know that you're a grown-up? Gen X Grown Up is a member of the Evergreen Podcast family. Learn more at evergreenpodcasts.com. Unacceptable for grown-ups. Your dinner cannot just be french fries. Basically, life sucks as a grown-up. <laughs> and we're 20 minutes into the show, ladies since and gentlemen. We, since we've talked Welcome about back. half the topics already. Yeah. <laughs> we'll skip that when we get to it. <laughs> right, we get to it. Oh, we talked about this before we recorded. Yeah. Skip that. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm tired of talking about, about this. That. Yeah. <laughs> we'll listen to the show. But I swore we said this. No, that was before <laughs> we started recording. Yep, that's what I got. So, George, what do you got for us? Oh, okay. <laughs> I was waiting for you to finish that. I was like, George, you, what do you have for us? I was like, okay. That's right. All right. I had um, to think about that for a minute. <laughs> Like, not sure if you wanted to call on me in my own damn segment. All right, fine. Yeah, exactly. I see where we're going here. Hi, I'm Christina Yerling Biro, host of the podcast Pop Culture Confidential. Join me as I go way behind the scenes with some of the most influential people in entertainment and media. Hear actors such as Succession's Brian Cox talk about his favorite characters to play. There always has to be a mystery. The audience have to be in a situation where they want to know what's going on. Meet studio execs like Pixar chief Pete Docter and learn his secret on how he makes us cry. Emotion is our first language. And so many others who are defining popular culture, from Obama speechwriter David Litt to Top Chef host Padma Lakshmi. We don't often think about food politically or we don't want to, but it really is. Join me. Search for Pop Culture Confidential wherever you get your podcasts.